All right, so we got the recent AP poll update here, the second to last update before we officially reach March. I'm going to go over it, go through it, and then take a look at the actual analytics rankings in comparison to where some of these teams currently stack up in the AP poll. We've got Houston going to the number one overall team, getting 48 overall first place votes. Bama and Kansas both received seven. Alabama losing, I believe, a week ago on Monday to Tennessee on the road. Then they thoroughly throttled Georgia on Saturday, but they still fall to the two. You've got Houston, who continues to just win every game in the American, sitting at 25-2 and two as the number one overall team. And the analytics agree with this. The analytics have Houston as a virtual consensus number one overall team, and Alabama as a consensus number two. Kansas moving up to the number three overall team. So Kansas, what an amazing win they had against Baylor. Just remarkable turnaround at home in the second half. They were losing by like 13 points late in the first half, and with like 10 minutes left in the game, they were up by 12 Pretty crazy turnaround there. I mean, at this point, Kansas is, re is receiving number one overall votes. And right now, they're locked into a number one seed. The all-important number one seed. The final number one seed would be UCLA, according to the AP poll, sitting with just four losses over Purdue. Purdue down two spots after losing to Maryland and then crushing Ohio State. UCLA taking advantage of that Pac-12 conference that's probably going to only get three teams in. Although the thing that I've been seeing when it comes to the overall rankings of UCLA and where they're actually going to slot it might be hard for them to get a number one seed because of how bad the Pac-12 is and that strength of schedule and things like that. But we will see right now. They are listed at number four, Purdue at number five. You know, and if you're Purdue, you would love to sneak back up. We'll see what they end up doing towards the end of this Big Ten season. But they are on the brink right now, depending on which bracket you look at. A lot of brackets I've been seeing that have been pouring in do have Purdue as a potential one seed, even after that Maryland after that Maryland loss. Virginia at number six. They're solid, you know, 21 and four. I, I still have questions about Virginia's offense. I, I, I just, I'm scared because I feel like if a team gets hot, whether it's the first round, second round, is Virginia explosive enough to really contain a team going on a crazy run and going like seven of 10 from three to start? I don't know if Virginia can, you know, as the number six team. Arizona at number seven, very similar to UCLA. They've just been beating up on everyone in the Pac-12. You've got Texas down to number 8. Baylor at number 9. So Baylor loses to Kansas. Very respectable loss. It was a game they were winning. They're still at 20-7 and seven and they're still in the top 10. And then Marquette at number 10 rounding out the top 10. They've been playing really well recently. And they're sitting right now on that 3 line. Tennessee down to number 11. So kind of a Tennessee's been really wonky recently, losing games they're not supposed to, beating a team like Alabama at home. You know, Tennessee is a very defensive minded team, and teams like that tend to, when you struggle to score, especially in March. It is a problem. It's, it's very similar to Virginia, although I will say Virginia actually in terms of efficiency is pretty good on offense, at least according to the analytics. Then you've got Gonzaga up to number 12. How about Gonzaga's offense? It's just every game with Gonzaga, it's like 90 to 80. It's crazy. They're a really fun team to watch if you're... You want to watch a, a high-scoring game. Miami at number 13. So uh, Miami is a team that's really taken advantage of a bad, real bad ACC. Miami, you know, any other year in the ACC, I think they've got eight or nine losses. They're still decent. They had a really good transfer class. But to me, that record is a little bit bloated because of how bad the ACC is this year. Kansas State down to number 14. St. Mary's back up to 15. The analytics still love St. Mary's. Xavier at number 16. T Indiana down to number 17. You've got UConn back up to 18. Creighton down one spot at 19. That's 
Four out of five straight Big East teams rounding out the top 20 with Providence charging at 20 and 7. They are up four spots there. Northwestern makes an appearance at number 21. That's their first time in the poll this season. You know, I don't know about Northwestern. It's very hard. You know, you can say what you want about them. They, you know, what happened midseason where it kind of seemed like they were, you know, using an excuse to rest players and, and cancel games or reschedule. I don't know. But listen, if you get away with it, you get away with it. They're definitely a good team this year. They just, who did they blow out yesterday? Oh, Iowa. That was an impressive win. They won like 80 to 60 at home. So yeah, Northwestern's definitely trending right now. San Diego State down one spot. I don't think, yeah, I don't think San Diego State lost this past week, but they had a crazy bad game versus Fresno State. They won 45 to 43. Iowa State down four spots all the way to 23. TCU also down two spots to 24. And then Texas A&M, who has just been amazing in the SEC this year, coming in at number 25, getting a shout out. Others receiving votes, you've got NC State getting 54 votes. They would be the number 26 team. Pittsburgh, Maryland. How about Oral Roberts, who had, what are they, 23 and 4? They get 14 votes. Kentucky, they were just on the bubble. Looks like at this point, Kentucky is trending. They're off the bubble. Boise State's a team the analytics love. Arkansas, Florida, Atlantic, Charleston, Minnesota, Duke, Illinois, how about Kent State, Nevada, and Oklahoma State rounding it out. Now taking a look at the actual T-rank, you have Houston listed just barely in front of Alabama as the number one overall team by .007. If you take a look, that's the difference between Houston and Bama. Both of those teams 13-1 and in their conference, both have played 27 games. Houston... Uh, you know, actually very good in terms of efficiency on offense, number three in the country on defense, they're number seven. Alabama, you know, top 11 in both offense and defense. UCLA at number three. Tennessee still at number four, even after the losses, you can see the offense is lagging significantly behind the defense. Purdue at number five. St. Mary's coming in at number six. How about UConn? Not even ranked inside the top, tw or, or were they? Where is UConn? Was you? Oh yeah, UConn's number eighteen. I was gonna say you get you, those uh, Big East teams all jumble together, don't they? They all jumble together. So UConn at number seven here. That's real impressive. Even just nine and seven in conference play, but number seven in terms of the analytics. Arizona at number eight. San Diego State sitting at number nine. Kansas. The analytics still kind of dislike them because they've had a number of close wins. They're at number 10. You've got Baylor sitting 11, Creighton at 12, Iowa State hanging in there at 13, Gonzaga, the number one offense in college basketball at 14, and then te Texas rounding out the top 15 there. And then looking at the Ken Palm, and with these uh, analytics, you can involve the overall luck rating, which is something I always look at. Who are the teams that have gotten a little bit more lucky this year? You know, any team inside, I would say the top 50 or 60, maybe they've gotten a, a few, you know, lucky wins like Alabama at 43, Kansas at 33, Texas at 80, Baylor at 72, San Diego State at 78. The actual rankings are a little bit different in terms of the Ken Palm. They have Houston as the clear number one by about a point and a half. And then they have Alabama, UCLA kind of fighting for that number two spot. And then a clear break with Purdue at number four really fighting with Tennessee, who sits at number five, UConn at number six, Kansas up to number seven on the Ken Palm, St. Mary's sitting number eight, so St. Mary's inside of the top eight in two of the major analytics, when really, I mean, we've got the, you know, the bracket matrix saying they're probably going to be a five seed, it's pretty crazy, and then you do have Arizona at number nine with Creighton sitting at number 10, the analytics love Creighton, they've had a lot of unfortunate luck. You take a look at their luck rating, 343 out of 363. That's part of the reason they have nine losses. A lot of close losses. Texas below Creighton, even though they have three less losses. Marquette at number 12. Gonzaga at 13. Baylor sitting at 14. Iowa State 
Arkansas, that's impressive at number 16 above in front of San Diego State. So that's a big discrepancy in terms of the analytics. San Diego State all the way out at 17, according to the Ken Palm. Maryland up to 18, TCU, and then Indiana rounding out the top 20 there. But that is just the recent AP poll update. I'm sure, you know, that subject to change and things like that. But at this point, I think you can pretty much say Houston's gonna gonna be a one seed. Alabama's gonna be a one seed. Other than that, I do think the last two one seeds do have wiggle room. Whether it's Kansas, you know, if Kansas loses a few games, they could get knocked down. UCLA certainly is no slam dunk for a one seed because they've had a bad schedule. If they lose another game, they're probably knocked out. Purdue, you know, so there's a number of teams. And then even a team like Virginia. Could you imagine Virginia? They only have four losses. They've been able to really pad nice wins in the ACC. If they keep winning games, they could steal a one seed. Arizona's kind of in a similar spot. UCLA is at this point. If Arizona wins out, they're probably going to get a one seed. So those are kind of the teams that are involved. I would say for Texas, they already have six losses. So it's probably going to be very hard. They're probably out of the one seed mix unless they run the table in the Big 12, which would be very impressive. Baylor and Marquette, I don't see them getting one seeds. They just play. It's just tough conferences. You're not going to win out. So I would say the one seeds are really going to come down to Kansas, UCLA, Purdue, Virginia, and Arizona with Alabama and Houston virtually already locking up their one seeds, but we will see. Guys, it's going to do, do it for this video. Make sure you're following me on Twitter. Link to that's always in the description.